Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to design foundations really simply. What I'll be explaining first is the basics behind ground pressures. And then I'll be showing you an example on how to design a strip foundation and also a pad foundation. So firstly, I wanna talk about what's the most important thing about foundation design, and that is, what is the bearing strata and how much can it actually support? The magic words you need to look out for in a ground investigation report is allowable bearing pressure. And that is the figure which we'll be using to design most of our foundations. If the ground isn't suitable for typical strip or pad foundations, the ground investigation report should let you know. And it should suggest to use sort of an alternative foundation solution, such as like piled or a raft solution. Without getting too much into it, the geotechnical engineer will be going to site and then taking soil samples and they'll be running through lab tests to determine sort of what the allowable bearing pressure is going to be and what kind of predicted settlement that would be. Typically, allowable ground settlement is in the region between sort of 25 to 30 mil and that's generally acceptable for most building structures. So, for example, a ground report might tell you that the bearing strata is one meter below ground and that's going to be mudstone. It's got an allowable bearing pressure of 200 kPa and it's got predicted assessment of 25 mil. This is just a very brief overview on geotechnics and I am by no means an expert on this subject. However, for designing fairly simple foundations, this is kind of what you tend to need. I do suggest attending some form of training course on geotechnics just to sort of improve your learning and improve your knowledge on geotechnics. If you've watched my video on how to calculate loads and load takedowns, this example follows straight on from that. If you haven't seen it, please check it out in the link above or in the description below. In this example, I'm going to say that the bearing strata is a very stiff clay with an allowable bearing pressure of 200 kPa and at a founding depth of 1 meter. For some reason, I like to refer to ground pressure in kPa, but just note that kPa is the same as kilonewtons per meter squared. Also note that pressure is the same as stress. So if you didn't know, you can work out how to calculate stress simply by looking at the units. As I mentioned earlier, the pressure or stress is measured in kilonewtons per meter squared. A kilonewton is a force and meter squared is area. So stress is a force divided by an area. Pretty simple, eh? As we are designing a strip foundation, which is a length of foundation and the force is a line load given kilonewtons per meter, we can rearrange the stress equation so that the unknown is area. As we know that the strip foundation is per meter, the area is simply width times one meter. So we simply divide the line load by allowable bearing pressure, which gives us the required width of foundation. The line load or force from the previous video example is 141.9 kilonewtons per meter. Therefore, all we need to do is divide the force by the allowable bearing pressure, which is 200, and this gives us required width of 0.70 nine five meters clearly no builder is going to build that so we need to pick a width that matches a digger's bucket width and we also need to factor in the self weight of the foundation now that we have a width we can calculate the foundation weight i mentioned earlier that the bearing strata is one meter below ground so for simplicity let's assume that the foundation is going to be one meter deep by 8.5 meters wide to take into account the added weight of the foundation we can simply calculate the weight of concrete by multiplying one meter by 0.58 meters times the density of mass concrete which is generally 24 kilonewtons per meter cubed this gives us 20.4 4 kilonewtons per meter which we can add to the original line load of 141.9 which equals 162.3 kilonewtons per meter. We can repeat the same process but this time with the increased load. If we wanted to know the exact stress on the ground with the actual provided width of 0.85 meters, all we need to do is divide the force by the width. So 162.3 divided by 0.85 gives us a stress of 191 kilonewtons per meter squared or kPa. Now moving on to pad foundations which are typically square. Now there are two types, unreinforced pad foundations and reinforced. Knowing when to propose a type of solution is key, and I'll touch on this briefly. Generally, if the bearing strata is deep, say 1.5 meters below ground level, then it would make sense to go for a mass concrete pad foundation, which would be unreinforced. This is because the amount of excavation required lends itself to go for mass pads. On the flip side, if the bearing strata is shallow, say 0.5 meters below ground, then there is no point in going for mass concrete pads as you need to dig deep into the ground for them to work. So going for shallow pads where you minimize the excavation into good ground would be the ideal solution, but you do need reinforcement. This is just brief guidance and general practice. Other site or project related factors can sway the solution one way or the other. So regardless of whether it's reinforced or unreinforced, the first step is always the same in sizing the foundation. So here's an example. A 400 square column is to be supported off a pad foundation with a load of 2000 kilonewtons and allowable bearing pressure of 300 kPa. The bearing strata is 1.5 meters below ground. Similar to the strip foundations example, 
but instead of just needing to find width because we knew it was per meter, we need to find the area, so we need breadth and width. Fortunately, most pad foundations supporting a single column will be square to avoid eccentricities, so the breadth and the width will be the same. So if we divide the force by allowable bearing pressure, we get an area, and to find the breadth or width, we need to square root it. So from the values given in the example above, 2000 kilonewtons over 300 gives us 6.67. Root this value and we get a width of 2.58 meters. Like before, we need to fad in the self weight of the pad, so let's guess that the pad will be 3 meters squared. As we know from the example that the bearing strata is 1.5 meters below ground, mass concrete pads are likely to be the optimal solution. For a mass concrete pad foundation to work, the depth of the foundation needs to be a minimum value. For simplicity, assume the load is centered to the column and pad. If we draw a 45 degree load spread, we can work out the required depth to ensure that all the load can be transferred across the full width of the foundation. Using trigonometry, the depth required will be half the foundation width. If we don't provide enough depth to the foundation because there is no reinforcement, the load cannot spread and utilize the full width of the foundation. So back to the design, the planned dimensions are to be three by three meters. The depth needs to be 1.5 meters. So the self weight of the pad is three times three times 1.5 times the density of concrete, which is 24 kilonewtons per meter cubed, which equals 324 kilonewtons. Add this to the column load, which gives us 2,324 kilonewtons total. Doing the exact same calculation as before, but instead force is 2,324 over 300, and then square rooting gives us a width required of 2.78 meters. As we are providing a width greater than this, we can safely say that 3 by 3 by 1.5 meter pad foundation will work for this load and ground condition. I won't go into detail on how to design a reinforced pad foundation in this video. There should be plenty of free guidance online if you need to find an example in the meantime. Hopefully this video wasn't too long and you found it useful. If you have any specific questions or you'd like to see a video made on a specific topic, just drop me a comment. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.